everybody. This is Catherine from Dryer Days Art Studio. Thank you for being with me today. Um, I'm going to do another beginner pour with craft paints. Uh, but I wanted to just show you real quick the colors we're going to use. I'm going to again go with craft paints uh, just to show because, you know, for people just starting out, you really don't want to be breaking the bank buying uh, really expensive professional level paints. So Kind of seen a trend here this time with the Americana paints, and I'm using just white. Uh, dioxide, okay, yep, yeah, purple. Ultra deep blue. Uh, this is peacock teal, and then this is a brushed metal. Uh, and that's just what it says on here is brushed metal. It's like a gold, which I thought would be pretty with these colors. So we'll just go ahead and get started. Again, I'm using an 8x10 canvas, just a small one. Um, I'm really pumped. If you saw my tools video, I was using that huge um, propane like torch and my husband got me butane for my little handheld one. So I am so excited. We're going to try this one out today. All right. So we'll get started putting the paint in. And again, these uh, beginner tutorials are going to be, you know, start to finish. And um, some of these paints I've had a while, so they're a little older. Some of them are brand new. And you know, with these craft paints, they're a lot thinner. You don't have to mix quite as much of a pouring medium in, but once you open them and they kind of sit for a little while, they coagulate inside the bottle a little bit and you can get like really runny, stringy pieces that are not too much fun to work with. But the first painting that I did, the beginner one, the colors, I wanted an array of colors and they weren't very vivid. These Americana ones are a little bit nicer as far as craft paints go. And I wanted to pick colors that were a little bit deeper. So we will see how these pick up today and how these do. And here I am with the pouring medium, my homemade pouring medium with glue wall and spring water. And just putting enough in until it's kind of covering the color in there. Again, I, I don't weigh stuff. I don't really measure things out precisely. I just kind of go in and cover, submerge the color paint underneath with my pouring medium. And then I go in and I start stirring and I see if I need to add some water. Again, with these um, craft paints, they are a lot thinner by nature. So you don't have to use a lot of flow me um, pouring medium or water to thin them out which is nice and I'm making a mess. <clears throat> I'm always making a mess really. Thank God for my pour table. And I can kind of see chunks in this. As I said, they coagulate. Mm, excuse me, I need a drink. Um, they can, they, so I'm gonna see if I can get this one out. Cause you don't want stuff like that showing up in your painting. I'm pretty excited about these colors. I'd like to see how they all go together. So again, just adding some water. I've already put my pouring medium in. Looking for maybe any chunks in there. Okay, these all look great as far as consistency. So I'm now gonna put just a couple drops of silicone in. I am gonna use this blaster silicone lubricant that I got at Lowe's. I always put a couple in the white, do some in the blue, do one in the green. Okay. Now again, for beginners, um, and I'm just going to kind of mix that in a little bit here, the silicone. Um, you know, I do on some of my other paintings get a little bit picky about what colors go in when on top of what um you know for the beginners i would say more so just get comfortable with the pouring with the mixing i may need to mix up just a little bit more white i love white i put a lot of white in my paintings especially for the flows um it just gives a nice contrast in my opinion to sit for 
too long. So I'll put some more in. I can see, I mentioned that sometimes these colors get a little chunky and I can see some um, of the purple maybe being a little chunky, which of course is not optimal, but these are the kind of trial and error things that we go through. Okay, and since we're only using one cup, I will just flip it this time. Again, I kind of do mine off center a little bit. And we'll let all that get to the bottom. I can't wait to use this torch. Oh yeah. Pardon me while I adjust my flame there. getting cells which is beautiful Torch, see what you got. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that's magic. It's just magical. And once again, I'm pretty impressed by how these craft paints are looking. I really wasn't sure how I was going to feel about them. So you can see too, as I kind of put this on and blend it in with the colors surrounding it, it does kind of pull on the paint and almost blend it in itself. Kind of get quiet when I'm working, I'm trying to remember to talk. Do one more. Wow, getting lots of cells on this one. <clears throat> okay, so we're getting a little bit of runoff, which is perfectly normal. just to be solid purple. And what I'm doing now is I'm kind of like getting, making sure the sides are covered. Wow, the cells are looking really nice. So that was a little bit like too much teal going on up there for me, so I added a little bit of color in there.
And this is just coming out beautifully. I, I really, um, I'm so impressed by these colors. These cells look awesome. I love, I love it when I have really light areas and really dark areas of my cells. I love that so much. And we have so much of that through this painting. So I'm once again, I'm gonna go put this on my dry rack and we'll come back later and take a closer look at it. All right guys, well here it is. Up close on some of these cells. Just looking gorgeous. Very, very surprised on the craft paints. This one is still a little wet, so we're getting a little bit more shine than we would this area up here you can see is more dry. But yeah, it's beautiful. I'm sweating, this is literal sweat. I am literally putting sweat into these videos. No blood yet. There'll probably be tears. So far, just the sweat.